Hello everybody, we are here with a new interview with a big artist from the 80s. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mr. Mike from A Folk of Seagulls. Thank you very much, Mike, for your time. How are you? I am great, thank you. How is Argentina faring? Uh, Good? Yeah, everything. I think it's going well, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know... Um, okay. At first, I want to talk about uh, your hairstyle in the 80s, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't um, like the one I have now? <laughs> no, you look, you look amazing, I have to say. But, 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 it's incredible, you know? It was incredible. I want to know how long it, it took you to prepare that hairstyle you had, you know? <laughs> uh, once I got used to having that hairstyle, it took me five minutes. Ah. The first... The first The first four or five times I did it, it took a bit longer. And, you know, because I had so much hairspray on it, it used to just basically stay like that. <laughs> and I would wake up in the morning and just put a hairdryer on it and then re-sculpt it, you know? So yeah, it wasn't too bad. It, it did use a lot of hairspray though. <laughs> <laughs> At, uh, at what point uh, did you really uh, realize that music uh, was your thing, you know? Because before A Flock of Seagulls, uh, you had formed uh, another band, uh, no? I was in a band called Tuntrix. Mm. Uh, we released one single, uh, and then after leaving that band, I was only in that band for maybe a year, uh, they changed their format and they became a band called Hamby and the Dance. Um, and they got a big record deal. But at the same time, I had already started a flock of seagulls because I wanted to do my music. Um, and we didn't really think about getting a deal. We just thought about playing music that we liked. And, um, so, you know, we rehearsed for about nine or 10 months nonstop because we loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And then people start to hear it. And very quickly after that, we got a, a, a deal, you know, and um, I don't think we realized at the time what we were doing. You know, we were we were on the forefront of like a new sound and everything. But we didn't know that we were just saying, wow, this sounds good. And that sounds good. And and uh, once it got out to the public, you know, we kind of went, oh, wow, <laughs> everybody <laughs> seems to like it. You know? So. <laughs> Why a flock of seagulls? Why? Why that name? Okay, um, the book Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Um, I just read that book, and uh, it affected me because I felt a kinship with the the character seagull in the book. You know, the, mm -hmm. if you've ever read the book, it's about a seagull that goes in his own direction. And instead of fighting for food, like all the other seagulls, he says, oh, I have wings and I can fly and I want to learn to fly better. And he sees an eagle, an eagle flying up in the sky and he goes, I want to be like the eagle. So I had a lot of that in me. I, I was like, I want to be better than other bands that I've seen. I want to do my thing and I know my thing is going to be good. Um, so that kind of inspired the name. And then that was cemented in place by the Stranglers, a band called the Stranglers, yeah. who in the middle of one of their songs yell out a flock of seagulls. And we had gone to see the Stranglers in Eric's club in Liverpool and Hugh Cornwell, the singer, as he yelled that out, he pointed, or it seemed like he pointed straight at us. Mm -hmm. And he said, a flock of seagulls. So after the show, we went back and on our on our board where we wrote the songs we wrote a flock of seagulls and that became our name oh wow. <laughs> 
then you had a big hit, I Ran, I Ran So Far Away. Uh, it's a very catchy song. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite instrumental, you know, the, the intro of the song is fantastic. Um, how did uh, this uh, great success come about, you know? Tell us about this song. I ran came about when, um, you know, we like things to sound spacey, so um, growly and spacey and stuff like that. So we always work towards that. And um, we, in Liverpool, there was a small record company um, called Zoo Records. And we went to see them to see if we could get a release and get a single or something. <clears throat> and on the wall, they had a picture of two people running away from a flying saucer. Mm -hmm. So when, we, of course, we went back to rehearsal, I really liked the picture. So I wrote lyrics based on that picture. You know, I ran away and it's, just, you know, he's uh, supposed to have met his space girlfriend kind of thing. He's running away from a flying saucer. And, you know, stuff like um, Close Encounters, Mm -hmm. those movies were out at the time so all that stuff inspired you know the sounds and the story of Iran um, and you know really the band we just wrote the song and the record company loved it and they're the ones that put the promotion behind it to make it a big hit you know so mm -hmm. um, it's it kind of like once you get the ball rolling it rolls faster and faster and faster and then all of a sudden you're up there, you know? Yeah, I know, I know. Um, uh, just looking for a personal answer. If you could go back in time, will you change something or not of your life? Oh, wow, that's, that's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't really think so because, you know, I've had such a good time with music and I, I never chose to be a musician. It, it's almost like it chose me. Mm -hmm. You know, I never rehearse, I never practice, but I can come up with good songs and I can play well enough that when we play live, um, I've met some great people, uh, worked with great people. Um, it's hard to say I'd change anything because if you change something, it, it's not going to be the same, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and even t even till today, which is, you know, 40 years later, I still love doing music and I still love doing gigs and I still think I can write hit songs <laughs> so yeah. it's great I just love it um just that we you talk about music uh, what is your opinion about current music you know comparing to those times oh, well I'm not really in the scene of current music so it's I look at it from the outside and I think it's a bit unfortunate that uh, um, there isn't doesn't seem to be room for all kinds of music now. It's you know it's either you're on a, a a Disney thing with a big video or you're chosen by a corporation. Um, I'm sure there's a big underground for rock bands and stuff like that, and just more interesting bands. But um, uh, Personally, a lot of people that are stars these days, I don't see what they've done to become stars. Mm. You know, it's it's almost like, a, a, I don't know, like somebody picked them out of nowhere. Mm. Whereas in my day, we kind of had to work hard to get to where we wanted to be. And then if you were lucky and you worked hard, you got a record deal and it worked out for you, you know. Um, but also, I think there's, there's so many diversions these days mm. when out when we were young there wasn't that much to do there wasn't that many tv channels uh, especially in england we didn't have cars mm. but we had room to play guitar and play synth and and that was our exciting moments but these days you know kids have cars they have uh, the internet they have all kinds of stuff um and there's too many distractions i think so Um, not that many people work hard enough. I don't think anyway, you know. I mean, they, they, there are good songwriters out there. Um, but it used to see you could, you could watch a band develop, 
you know, they'd mm. put a single out, get bigger, another single bigger, an album bigger. These days, they're just big, just like that, and then gone, just like that. Yeah. So I'm glad it happened to me when it did. Um, uh, Shaz, tell us about your projects for the future. Okay, we just finished um, the new orchestral album. Mm -hmm. which you know, is the second uh, the second release of of the albums that we're doing. Uh, it's called String Theory. And, um, of course, we take older songs. They get uh, reorganized, rearranged with orchestras. And that's quite interesting because when those songs are written, we never thought about having an orchestra. You know, we're lucky mm -hmm. to have a synth on it and mind an orchestra. Um It's different when somebody else comes along with an idea and you just open up to that idea and let them let them do that kind of thing. You start to see different um, different approaches and different things that you could do in the future. Yeah. Um, so that is about to come out. There's a single out called "Say You Love Me," uh, which some you know they made a video for, and mm -hmm. uh, I like the video. Everything about it's good. Um, now I'm working on a new seagulls album and i've got i'm about halfway through it and also another album which may be seagulls or it may be solo which is called space boy and it has a little story of a alien coming to earth and <laughs> and what he thinks about earth and stuff like that and that i've been writing for a couple of years and i've just started to record a few tracks off that so that's probably two years away And uh, the next Eagles album should be out next year. Oh, great, great. Just a message for all your fans, you know, around the world, not only in England, around the world. Um, I would say thank you for supporting the band over the years. Thank you for liking the music, because we, we never know whether somebody's going to like it or not. Except we always get surprised when somebody goes, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> we're like, what, are you, are you crazy? We love it. Um, so to all the fans, I would say, yeah, look out for what's coming. Um, check out the orchestral albums. Um, and basically, thank you. you know, thank you for being fans. It's great. <laughs> um, thank yeah, you very great, much. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time. And I wish you the best. You are one of my favorite artists. Thank you. Of, of the 80s from England. So uh, I'm very happy for this interview. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>